Welcome everyone to today's coffee lecture, Open Access First Aid in the Funding Jungle. Um, my name is Barbara Hirschmann and I'm the head of the e-publishing office at the ETH Library. Um, there are a few links to websites in the presentation slides, uh, which is why um, my colleague has already uploaded or will upload shortly a link to the meeting uh, to the presentation slides so you can visit those pages already during or after the lecture please just look in the chat and then you will find uh, the link to the download file there but of course we will also share the slides and the recording later via our website during the next 10 minutes, you will learn what the terms gold, green, and hybrid mean in the context of open access publishing. And I will show you which funding options for open access publication fees are available for authors from ETH Zurich, either from the ETH library or from the research funders. First, let's have a look at the three colors that we distinguish when we talk about open access. When we speak of gold open access, we refer um, to journals or books that are completely open access. Um, when we speak of hybrid open access, we refer to journals that are in principle subscription journals, but also offer an open access option for individual articles. And when we speak of green open access, we, we refer to papers that are published in subscription journals without open access at the publisher's website, but for which the author has provided open access by uploading the paper to an open access repository. Gold open access journals contain only articles that are freely accessible for everyone. Because open access is the standard model for these journals, it is often mandatory for authors to pay an article processing charge, short APC, when their article is accepted by one of these journals. Um, there are, however, also gold open access journals that do not charge APCs, and these journals are called diamond open access journals. They are funded by institutions, learned societies, libraries, publishers, or consortia of such organizations. If you want to find an open access journal in your discipline or simply just check if a certain journal is a gold open access journal, we recommend to use the Directory of Open Access Journals, DOHA, which is a comprehensive and also quality controlled database of gold open access journals. Hybrid journals, on the other hand, are subscription journals that offer a paid open access option for individual articles. Therefore, they consist of mixed content. While much of the content is only available to subscribing institutions, selected articles might be open access. When publishers started to convert their traditional subscription journals to hybrid journals, they added the income they got from individual authors who paid an APC on top of the income they already had from library subscriptions. And this business model um, is called double dipping and has been criticized for being unsustainable for academic institutions. This is why publishers and libraries have nowadays moved to enter into so-called read and publish agreements, which include access to the subscription content as well as open access publishing for the institution's authors in these hybrid journals for one fixed annual price. Unfortunately, there is no comprehensive database of all hybrid journals available. However, you can assume that most journals that are not indexed in the DOHA are hybrid journals. And also when you check the author information section on a journal's website and you find some information about a paid open access option, it basically means that it is a hybrid journal. For article that, that are articles that are published in subscription journals, there is also another type of open access, which is called green open access, also referred to as self-archiving. Self-archiving means that you publish an article in a conventional journal and additionally upload an open access version to a so-called repository. Our institutional repository at ETH is the research collection. It's important to note that Due to the publishing agreement you have with the journal publisher, 
you need to follow the publisher's regulations on green open access. These regulations mandate, for example, certain embargo times for green open access, and they also regulate which article version can be uploaded uh, and which ones are not allowed to be used. Um, we recommend to check the so-called Sherpa Romeo database to find out about these publisher regulations for self-archiving. Now, as I have explained in the previous slides, if you plan to publish in a gold or hybrid journal, you will often be asked to pay an APC. Therefore, I will now move on to explain in which case you can receive APC funding from either ETH Library, the Swiss National Science Foundation, or the EU, which in one of their funded projects. As you can see in the first line of this chart, both research funders as well as ETH Library provide funding for APCs in regular issues of gold open access journals. The SNSF, however, as shown in line two, excludes articles in special issues from their APC funding. Um, then when it comes to hybrid journals, there are less funding options available. Neither the SNSF nor the EU in their current framework program provide APC funding for hybrid journals. ETH Library also does not co cover APCs for hybrid journals outside our institutional agreements. However, for publishers with which we have a read and publish a institutional agreement, very often hybrid journals are included in these agreements and therefore these APCs are covered by ETH Library. How does the funding process work with the research funders? If you have an SNSF funded project, as I said, all the articles in regular issues of gold open access journals will be covered by the SNSF. You do, you do not need to pay these APCs from your project budget, but rather you submit each APC invoice to the SNSF via a tool called Chronos Hub, and then the SNSF will settle the invoice directly with the publisher. This option is available anytime, even after your project has already ended. Now, if you have an EU-funded project, the process is a bit different. Even though the EU also covers APCs for articles in gold open access uh, journals, and they even did for hybrid journals in the former framework program, um, you need to plan for this already during the grant application stage and include the estimated APC amount in the project budget. This also means that you can only use this APC budget during the project phase and any articles that are published after the project end must be funded by other means. Last but not least, let's now have a look at the uh, procedure for open access funding through ETH Library. First of all, APC funding via ETH Library is only available if you do not have any other APC funding available. So you should always make sure first that your invoice is covered by a research funder if that's possible at all. If you do not have other funding available, as a next step, we recommend to always check our eligibility criteria. These criteria might change slightly from time to time, so it's best to check them before each submission. As a next step, please check on our APC wiki if we have an institutional agreement with the publisher of the journal in which you want to publish. Um, if we have an agreement, make sure you use your ETH email address when submitting your article and also please follow any other publisher specific instructions mentioned in our wiki. <clears throat> if we do not have an agreement that includes your journal, um, you will need now to check if the journal is a gold or a hybrid journal. For gold journals, you can submit the APC invoice you will receive from the publisher to the ETH library by using a form on our website. 
we at the library will then settle the invoice with the publisher. For hybrid journals, without an existing agreement, there is currently no funding available. So you either need to pay the APC from your own budget or publish closed open access or provide open access to the article via the green road. I hope that I was able to bring some light into the open access funding jungle with today's coffee lecture. This was actually the last coffee lecture of the current series. Our next uh, coffee lecture series will start in November and will be again announced uh, via our news channel.